Hello everyone, how are you Viredin? Heya 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 Sounds Indian. Um, are we summoning rain Viredin? <laughs> Welcome to our Sunday morning stream where we're gonna do some chess. I'm currently still waiting for uh, Paul to come on online. Maybe in the meantime we can do some storm puzzle or whatever <laughs> that's named on leeches. You will try to stay awake, alright time zombie? Okay. We have puzzles, puzzle streak, puzzle storm, puzzle racer. We can try one of those. Let's see. Did I put on the sound? Yes, all right. Streak, storm, racer. Not because the chess is boring. All right, all right, that's on me. All right. I have no idea what would be the answer here. Nope. <laughs> You are pinned. Oh no. Um, if I take this and take this, it seems it's worth it. Okay. Um, checkmate. What do we have here? Get the queen. Uh, get the checkmate. Oh, what is going on? We could go there. I don't know if it's good or bad. We could follow and checkmate. All right. Um, okay, we can do this. We can take this. We can. Oh my god, the end game. Uh, take, push. Um, promote. Take. And then the queen comes, right? We have to take it. Okay. Uh. What is going on on this board? There is the thing, there is bishop, there is... Oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh, so we're looking here, but I have no idea. We have this move. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. We can take a pawn, I assume. And... Okay. There's a queen here. Why is there a queen here? I want to go here, but there's a queen here. Maybe we can take it instead. We are about the same speed, so that's good. That's good time zombie. Um, okay, so we can do this. I can take this and this or this is both for working, right? All right, I wish to go here. That was weird. Um, I mean, we can take it. Oh, but then our, oh no. How do I deal with that? Just protect it? Wait, if I take it, then they cannot take it, they cannot move. Yeah, because there is the king. All right. I suppose. Okay. I have no time. Ah! <laughs> Pin the queen. Ah! 
moves, accuracy, combo. I, I mean, accuracy is the most important, right? In Shogi, at least, like when I used to talk to me Shogi, I concentrated on accuracy rather than speed because you will get faster. If you think properly, you will get faster with time. So I recommend you guys also concentrate on that. Although where there is this big clock ticking, um, it's understandable. You want to do it quickly. Highest solver 14. That's not this impressive, but yeah, let me take a look at the last one. I was curious. There's anything simple. Like my my idea was to I guess oh wait, there's a rook here. <gasps> wait, we can just take it. Alright. Seems Paul is ready, so I'm gonna call him in a second. All right, guys, Paul is here. Hi, Paul. Yeah, hi, Carol. Hi, everyone. Hope this sound is OK. Um, yep, we did the storm puzzle on stream while waiting for you. Uh, apparently, it's my new all-time high score uh, in Golden. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not as amazing if you see that highest salt puzzle was 1,400, yeah. 1400. Well, I don't know about that. I <laughs> feel like some of these puzzles are rigged. People, you know, they have maybe memorized the solutions or they're doing something, you know, to get to that high level. I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's the plan for today, Paul? Oh, yes. Uh, let's do some studies first. Okay. Um, I gave you... Um, uh, study for you to um, work yes, on. I'm a very bad student and I didn't even touch it. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, we can uh, uh, work on it together. So maybe you can spend some time. And uh, it's the third one. Um, let's see. So yeah, go to. I it already. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. I was playing uh, like game per day of chess, I was reading the book. I was I even bought a chess set so that I can study it on a real board. But what eluded my mind is that I had a homework. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything apart from this study. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so let's see. Mm. So it's uh this one is white to move. Mm-hmm. Time Zombie said, now that I'm a national master, I must feel like I know 100% more about chess. Hmm. I don't think I know chess 100%, more like 50%. 50%. It's still amazing if it's 50%, <laughs> Even though I have been playing chess all my life since mm. uh, 8 years old and been playing about 25 years. Mm. Yeah. But you feel the same way too, right, for Shogi? It's no, just that it's like I know five percent. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I didn't want to say five percent, otherwise people would uh, get upset. I mean, that's why I said fifty. But <laughs> the point. Oh, I see. You are considering people's feeling. I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one is an interesting puzzle. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a puzzle. No, it's, it's not really like a puzzle per se. 
-hmm. but uh, it's more like um find advantage a positional understanding mm -hmm. um yeah it, it, yeah you you want to try to get like a slight advantage okay so let me think we have our king in rochade they have the king in rochade or castling whatever is the english name thanks viredin um they have the rook blocked the bishop blocked the knights are connected the queen is active we also have we, all of our pieces are de facto active and there is a dispute going on in the center i assume it's white to move right yeah white to move and win okay um so if it says move to win it's either we get a peace advantage or checkmate the king or open up the king stuff like that i assume in this case it's not gonna be like a checkmate there's just too many pieces on the board Mm -hmm. So it's going to be maybe, yeah, you might win an exchange or a piece, or uh, it's something else. All right, so let's see. This bishop is looking here, I'm rendering this pawn useless. This knight would be able to join the attack, but this knight is protecting. We could up put a pressure in the center. This knight looks useless so far. I can see like attack on the queen while attacking the bishop. This looks interesting, but um, I will have to consider it later. We could use the rooks somewhere. Would be cool. I don't even want to think about moving those pawns. <laughs> and the queen. Okay, the queen is looking here. Oh, by the way, I do want to say something yeah. about a pawn move. Pawn. Uh, be very careful when you push pawns. Um, obviously, you know that pawns cannot go backwards. Mm -hmm. So once you push a pawn, it can never go backwards, which is a big point. And you want to make sure that you don't overextend your pawns because if you overextend, your opponent can you know seize the advantage of the squares that you used to control, but you didn't. I, I think maybe it's very similar to Shogi in a way. Yes, but, it um, is. but in very, uh, yes, you can you know sacrifice and drop in chess. You cannot, yeah. Yes, yes, you cannot. So it's more emphasized, I think, in chess. So be very careful when you push a pawn because once you push it, it's you've already committed it, and then a different strategy uh, forms. So basically, strategy is formed based on the pawn structure, mm -hmm. and from the pawn structure you decide which minor pieces do you want to keep? Do you want to keep the knight, or do you want to keep the bishop? Okay, so in this case, we have a chain here. This is like an island, I think it was called. And they also have chain here, chain here, and they have a middle pawn. That seems quite unsupported, to be honest. Because the only friend they have is here. Oh, we exchange those pawns, okay. All right, so that's how I understand this position. Um, now let's jump into variations, right? So I naturally am inclined to not think about this pawn because taking this pawn means taking and this bishop becomes active. So I don't like that idea uh, on first sight and I would prefer to use the knight on this side. So I'm inclined to look toward the enemy's king. I also cannot ignore the fact that there's a bishop hanging. I could consider chasing him away, but it doesn't give me... It actually activates it more in the center, so maybe I will consider some knight jumps. Yeah, I can give you a hint here. What you want to do is you want to um, anticipate what black would like to do. Okay? So there's one move that black would like to play. Once you figure that out, then you know what you want to play. This is called prophylaxis, basically trying to uh, prevent your opponent from playing what he wants. There might be like something similar in Japanese, but it's called I mean, prophylaxis. We have prophylactica yeah. in Polish, but I never saw the English one, so I'm quite interested. Yes. So a lot of chess players would uh, call this kind of concept prophylaxis. And I like to do that. Like first, I like to um, prevent my opponent from doing what he wants. So I like to defend, and then I will counterattack. 
And then once I counterattack, I'll make sure that he doesn't really have moves to counterattack. So we have this prophylactic award, but it's more used as an adjective because it's quite interesting. Prophylaxis with an X, okay. I see times of abuse. <laughs> All right, so what the black wants to do? Okay, uh, I, I assume it's a pawn push. Which pawn? Uh, the one that I'm showing, so E4. Mm, okay. Let's see. Let, let me think about this. There's something wrong about E4. Yeah, E4 doesn't work in this case. And why is that? I have no idea. Okay, I mean, this is a simple tactic. So, um, what you want to do is when you we do just puzzles, it, or... Or... Oh, you want to look for captures first, captures and checks. But so I can see I can capture and then open this line, but I lose an eye. Oh wait, I get I gain a pawn, right? Yeah, you gain a pawn. That's okay. why e four doesn't work in this case. I see. Okay, that's simple enough. Yeah. I was oh, like, yeah. I give away my. Uh... Oh no, wait. I was thinking if I take, they're gonna take my bishop, but then there is a check. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's the reason why um black does not want to play e4. Okay, so they want they they must want to do something else. Okay. Um I mean The other most aggressive one would be to take the pawn. But apart from that, I don't see anything like this type of situation. Do you think um, by taking d4, e takes d4, do you think that would help black or do you think that would white help white? I think that would help white because we take with the knight and then we have the center. I think, but actually it deletes their isolated pawn as well. And if we take with the pawn, we have an isolated pawn. But then we have this but line open, which is pretty nice. Not um necessarily that isolated pawn is bad. Uh -huh. If you are um if you are able to attack, and you have the isol isolated pawn and it's not blockaded, you know, by the knight or the bishop, then uh it's in a big advantage for you. Okay, so in that so case. I yeah. think we have the attack, so it's advantage, question mark? Uh, yes, yeah, because black has uh, does not have like a full grip, you know, um, and it's it's not blockading the uh, pawn, like, the, the, you know, one of the pieces, the minor pieces, like the knight or the bishop is not in front of the d4 pawn. So it's okay in this case, because, you know, you can go after the queen, chase the queen, you can play knight e5. Um, there's like other things that you can do to prevent black from playing knight d5. So if it was black's turn to move, you know, um, after e takes d4, e takes d4, let's say we skip white's move, then black would be okay because of knight d6 and knight d5. But, um, but there's still tension because there's the unprotected bishop on a5. Mm -hmm. So maybe black would insert bishop takes c3 first before playing knight d6 and knight d5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if black has like an additional move, one or two, then black would be fine. But unfortunately, white is, um, you know, uh, has the move. Yeah. Can play rook e1, can do, ki do all kinds of tactics, maybe like knight d5 or, for instance. So black has to be careful. I see. Okay, so that's not what we wanna do. All right. What does black want to do? Well, we can definitely look at the variation after you find white's first move. 
But yeah, first you told me should... to find what Black wants yes. to do. Yes, yes, Black wants to do. So we'll go back to the E takes D4 after. But this is not what Black wants to do. So mm -hmm. I'll try again. So we looked at E4. We looked at E takes D4. Um, no, this doesn't. Oh. How about I go with logic that this bishop is too strong? It's not really too strong. And I chase it away. No, it doesn't. Wait, what? Okay, B5. Yeah, I'm just having... Like, I, I understand yeah, that... I my voice was weird. Okay, um, I understand that I want to activate my pieces as black. Um... Well, you mentioned the knight jump before. I think it blocks the bishop, but it attacks the bishop while activating our bishop. So maybe that's worth considering. Okay, let me give you a hint. Yeah, what kind of uh, position is this? Is this like an e4 type of position or is this a d4 type of position? Just by looking at the pawn structure, can you guess if... Uh, actually, this is really simple. Well, the d4 is played, so... Yeah, well, not not just that, but the pawn's on e3. So you know, white's pawn's on e3. So you know that this is not an e4 opening. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's an e4 opening. Okay. Usually in d4 openings, it's black good. is left with a very bad piece, minor piece. Which piece is that, usually? So case. like in a lot of queen's gambit type of positions. This. Yes, very good. Okay, just like in the French. In the previous stream, I did mention something about that French is a very difficult opening to play. It's not bad, but it's just harder as opposed to other types of openings like Karl Khan and the Sicilian because of the bad bishop. It's the same thing with um, in the d4 openings. So the reason... Um, so what black usually wants to do is want to try to activate the light square bishop. And there are ways to do that. And one of the ways is, what do you think is one of the ways? This is the hint. Um, and it's uh, very linked to what Black wants to do here in this position. Well, so usually either you would push this pawn to make a flank, but I also proposed moving this knight to open up the line, but you're saying... So where do you want to put the black dark uh, light square bishop for black? Usually, maybe like because of course it really depends on the position. But usually, well, if I could, I would like it like more here. But I assume it will be only possible up to here. Um. Besides Sometimes that, where else can you place the bishop? So that's one alternative. Good. Okay, what's the other alternative? I don't actually know. Okay, it's uh bishop b7. B7. Ah, oh, yeah, like the flank one. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I thought you would know because a lot of um, shogi players... No, I concentrated like to... too much on this line, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So um, there's another reason why, okay, so that's one of the reasons why uh, Black here wants to play b5 to um, support, no, to be able to play bishop b7 next move. But there's another reason why b5 is good here. Why is b5 a good move for Black? Mm, well, besides uh, getting the bishop active on that long h1 to a8 diagonal. Well, it attacks the white bishop directly. Okay, good. Yeah, that's one. But that's uh, not the answer I was looking for. Of course, gaining a tempo is very important. That's where you build speed and initiative. But you're on the right track.
I mean, I assumed we can use it to engage uh, using the queen and the bishop or activating the rook or... Activating no, which rook? The, the, mm, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this rook. So you're saying that uh, black can activate the uh, a8 rook and... Yeah, usually not on the, the b file. It's usually on the c file. C file, okay. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How would um, black utilize the rook on the c file? Yeah. Tell me like uh, some uh, plans, ideas that black has. So like, let's say I gave you like five free moves for black. Well, what so would you I push, I set up my bishop, I put the rook okay. and then put pressure here or something. Oh, that's my idea, but yeah. we talked no, about got... this pawn being strong, so maybe we can contest it basically before that happens. Yeah, usually, maybe not in this position, it's a little bit different. Yeah, so you're on the right track. Okay, but what about the move order? Okay, so the first move is really simple. What do you think the sim uh, first move is for black? Okay, good. And then the bishop retreats. Then what's your second move? Uh, I don't know where, but let's say here. Well, I assume the bishop. Uh, you mean uh, black? Yes, yes, bishop. And then what's the third move? The rook. And we're talking in a general sense. Uh, rook, Um, I would say the pawn on a6. Okay. You don't want to um, play the rook there yet. You want to first uh, push the c pawn. Yeah, in C5. that case, yeah, it makes sense. But you yeah. can't do it. You can't, you can't do that yet. Because why? Um... You want black wants to play b5, bishop b7, and c5, but there's something wrong with that. Black cannot play c5 because. I mean, probably they're losing the bishop, but. Um, let's see. Or, or no, something's nothing. not supported. So it's so black. But this pawn is not supported. Oh, which pawn? Uh, yes, b5, b5 is not supported. Uh, so how can you support b, the b5 pawn? Push the edge first. Or... A6, very good. Yeah. Then you're in time, uh, you'll be in the position to play c5 to open up the position. And uh, it really depends on what white does. But like, let's say white, you know, plays d5 or, you know, something like really bad. d5 is not a good move here, but let's say white plays d5. Then you don't have to play as black, play rook c8 because it's meaningless. Why would you put your rook in front of a pawn? Yeah, that's true. There's no open file. See, what you want to do is you want to wait until the pawns get traded. After c5, um, if white plays pawn takes pawn, then you uh, then you maybe you can play rook c5. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, not rook, uh, rook c8. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, there's like knight takes c5, which you want to consider. But just in a general sense, you don't want to play the rook move first. You want to play the pawn move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. This is we're talking just a little bit on the positional aspect. Yeah, I got so, it. Which makes uh, this puzzle like a great puzzle. Okay, so now you know. Going back to uh, what we were talking about earlier, we know that Black wants to play b five here. Okay, find a move uh, where you can tie in that prophylaxis concept, and or just push the h pawn. H pawn. Which one? No, you don't want to do that. The reason why is because you're going to create a very big weakness on b4. Remember, if you push the pawn, you, uh, you're may maybe you're gaining something. In this case, you're gaining control of the b5 square. But then you lost the b4. And you got to outweigh, you know, determine, you know, uh, which is better. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it was more important to, you know, guard the b4 square. So uh, B5 is not really like a big problem. So if B4 isn't a problem, then A4 is okay. But no, you don't want um, the bishop on A5 to have more mobility. I see. Okay. So find another move 
where uh, it somewhat prevents black from playing b5. I say somewhat because um, it's not very straightforward. So yeah, what makes this really difficult is that this is not only um, tactical, but it's also very positional. And it's really hard to find because this is a move that a lot of players uh, will fail to find because they want to push forward, you know, they want to attack, attack. But sometimes it's important to um, I, I don't want to uh, say it because it's going to give you a hint, but you probably know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I had three ideas, two of them, which was attack, um, which would be like super aggressive, but I don't think it's good. It's just that I had this idea, but maybe just simply going back before they push it is better. Okay. Like the bishop mm -hmm. retreating early. Bishop d3, okay. And do you have other uh, other candidate moves besides Bishop d3? Well, I could I could vaguely consider moving the bishop here, here, and like making some crazy attack on the edge, but okay. You're on the right track. Okay, it is a bishop move. Okay. Question is, uh, which move is it? Is it bishop a2 or bishop d3? Or we didn't look at bishop e2, but let's look at bishop e2 too and bishop b3. Okay, out of those four bishop moves, which one do you think is the best? Hmm. So if it would be like a normal game I'd play, I would just move it here to have a direct pressure on the king because it seems to be the quickest. Yeah. Um, like first at a at a glance, I would move it here, but um, I really like the idea of like double attack here too. <laughs> but I know it's mm. going to block my own rook, so I don't like that. Yeah. Mm. Moving it here, it seems kind of blocked, unless... Unless we have some kind of plan, because if they push this pawn, maybe we want to oppose it with this bishop. Okay, um... When, when I, um, like, uh, during my chess match, I try to look for tactics. That's the first thing I do. But then if tactics don't work, then I look for a positional concept. And one of them is space and how many squares I control mm -hmm. okay, as opposed to the opponent. Uh, because in the end, the more space you control, uh, your opponent will be suffocated. Well, I don't know about Shogi because uh, there's like uh, peace drops. So um, it's a little bit different. But in chess, uh, there are no peace drops. So if you're suffocated, you're going to have uh, a very hard time getting your pieces out. So it's very important. Space is uh, one big factor that you don't want to forget. Okay. Uh -huh. but in this position, okay, who has more space? White or black? Uh, white. I have white, white, I think. Yeah, white. Okay. So now uh, with that in mind, bishop d3 or bishop a2, which one do you think would give white more control of critical squares and space? Well, bishop d3, I think. Bishop d3? Like, okay. 
mathematically speaking, it controls. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Good. mathematically speaking. But don't just like look at just a bishop. Okay, look at all your other pieces too. Like your queen and your knight. And well, not mathematically just, speaking, if the bishop is here, the knight doesn't have a movement anymore. The queen is open. If the bishop is here, the queen has the movement still, and the knight can move. So mathematically speaking, this one gives more options. But considering you're upset, I believe it's a three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Bishop d three. Uh, good point. Okay. It's just that. Um. You know, when you think like three, four moves ahead. Let's say black plays e takes d four. E and white takes. plays e takes d4. You want to put both of your rooks on d1 and e1, right? And then you want to move the bishop on d2. d2. Then the bishop on d3 is blocking the rook. Yes. Okay. So um, in that variation there, um, it would be better for the bishop to be on a2. You have like a lot more attacking power. You know, the bishop will um, is eyeing the f7 square. Okay. And also restricting the knight from playing d5. You see that uh, black can't play knight d5, otherwise we'll lose a pawn after knight takes d5, or bishop takes d5. In this case, black will lose a piece because our bishop takes a5. But in a general sense, um, you're uh, preventing black from playing d5 because white has, a, you know, is controlling the d5 square with the two pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the nice thing about uh, bishop a2 is, well, I mean, you have bishop b1, which, uh, like you stated, okay? And also, um, white can play, like, something like knight a4, knight b5, knight e4, and putting pressure on the c6 pawn. Okay. Uh, e4, da, 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 I get lost. Uh, if the bishop is here, we can play... Um, two. And then, um, let's say, you know, it's uh, your turn to move. You know, you have an option. You can play knight d5. Knight you can play d5. knight d4. Wait, wait. Or... Knight d4. Wait, what? As white yeah, or knight... as black? Yeah, as, as white, as white. But there's a pawn on the way. Yeah, but uh, you have that option. Oh, okay, because it's the queen. Okay, I see. And, and that might be one of the moves that you might want to consider. I'm giving you, like, a hint. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, it might not be the best move. But you will eventually be playing something like that later. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, why bishop d3? I didn't really uh, like it because after, like, let's say, you know, you move the knight on c3 to like somewhere like a4 or wherever. And let's say black plays b5. And you take queen takes c6. Okay, attacking the rook. Okay. And you're, um, so you're threatening the rook. But, like, let's say if black defends the rook, black can play e4 and um, fork the bishop and the knight. You're giving black some opportunities to play for tactics. I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually, like, 10 minutes ago, I was thinking, oh, like, I bishop to d3 cannot be good because there's this pound push. I was, like, thinking about this, like, 10 minutes ago, I swear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, let's see. Okay, I I just like looked at the position after bishop d3, and then I just realized right away that it's a blunder. Okay, why, why is it a mistake? So let's be concrete, and then what, and then tell me. The specific uh, variation. Yeah, right, the because move. there is the bishop, there is the pawn, and then we we cannot really take it because. Oh, well, that wouldn't work because you can take take it with the knight, so you get a free pawn. But if that was the take, case, bishop. Oh uh, no, yeah, because sure. there is this idea of I see. This we take the knight first, right? Yeah, I take the knight first. Okay, okay? and then no matter what white does. Bishop takes c3 or b takes c3, white will lose a bishop mm -hmm. or a knight. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So, yeah, um, in a general sense, I was looking at it from a general point of view rather than from 
rather than based on this position. In general point of view, I would say bishop a2 is better, but definitely you're right. You should definitely consider bishop d3 too because it's attacking h7. You might have something there, but in this case, bishop d3 doesn't work. Yeah, I think the idea of space that you talked before is that we control more space in meaning of more of the center. Yeah. Um, actually cramping the opponent's pieces, so that's my understanding. Correct, uh, correct. Yeah. yeah, and of course there's an immediate tactic punishing the d3 as well, so that makes it easier that a3, a2 is uh, maybe better. So like, let's just say, you know, I'll give you a different scenario. The Let's say the bishop on a5 is on b6. a5 is on b6, okay. Okay. And you um, decide to play bishop d3. Okay. What's the difference between bishop d3 and bishop a2 in this position? Like, you're, um, maybe I should uh, reword it a little bit different. Okay. There's a move that black can play where bishop a2 prevents it and bishop d3 does not prevent it. Okay. Oh, and, uh, uh, and let's just say that the pawn, the h7 pawn is on h6. Wait, eight, seven. What? Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, we're just creating like different scenarios. And we're looking from a general point of view. And after you get this example, then you'll be convinced that bishop a2 is the move. So what I'm trying to get here is that is that um, by playing bishop a2, you're limiting black from uh, you know achieving the position that he wants, gi giving him less options. Yeah, I'm trying to understand what we're preventing, but I don't see it yet. Black will do something, and we are preventing because our bishop is on a2. But what is it? And it's not like it's a really great move for black. But I'm just saying, what if black plays that move? Yeah, it's not. It's not a great move. Black has like uh, many other moves that he can play. Well, I would consider this c5, but it's not really relevant. Yes, yes, deep. To this bishop's position, I don't think. No, I think you got it. So uh, after bishop a2, you said d5. When you said d5, are you referring to knight d5? Oh, uh, wait, I got lost. I was talking c5, but you're talking d5. Oh, yeah. oh because yeah, yeah. the bishop is not protecting it. I see. Yeah, I gave you the hint. Yeah. Yeah, I gave me the hint. Yeah, we talked about this uh, five minutes ago. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But now I'm giving you an example. Oh. Yeah. So now you clearly see that uh, white has like two um, pieces controlling the d5 square. And if black plays d5, then you just win a pawn. And black's position is wrecked. Okay, so it's like directly finding trouble. I see. So you got the yeah. idea um, the difference between yeah. bishop a2 and b3. Okay, good. Okay, so now let's move on. So after bishop a2, okay, mm -hmm. what do you think black can play after bishop uh, a2? So that's the move. But why is bishop a2 a strong move? You might think, yeah, so what? It's a retreating move, but it's really strong. It's like game over, almost. Okay. Mm. So there are some moves that black can play. Okay, so I want you to think what happens after black plays rook e8, after black plays h6, black plays e takes d4, which we were saying earlier. Okay. And what happens if black plays b5 and bishop c7? You want to look at all those moves. Okay. And if one of those variation... Uh, gives black an advantage, then of course bishop a2 is no good, but every single variation, white is winning. At least a plus uh, three, four point advantage. Hmm. 
Okay, maybe a plus two. But uh, some of these variations are plus three, plus four. Um, okay, where should I start? Where should I start? Uh, Bishop goes back, and then they play something. They can move the rug, they can push the pawn. Maybe I should start with the pawn. Um, and uh, there is a, I'm going to give you a hint. There is somewhere in those five or six variations, there is a knight d5 somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not as simple as you think. Yeah. You got to tell me that like concept, the idea, why, you know, one of those moves work. Because you might be able to like see the moves, but you might not understand why that's played. And once you get the idea, then we can, you know, move on to the next variation. Yeah, it's not as straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Compared compared to the other puzzles that I gave you. Like the other puzzles that I gave you are brute force calculation. Like you will immediately know you're winning because you're up a piece. In this case it's a little bit different. Okay. My weakness. We meet again. Strategy cultures. Alright, so you gave me too many options. So the bishop goes back, but black can do anything. Yeah. Um, let's start with b5. Okay, yeah, let's start with b5. Okay, I think that's uh, pretty... Uh, maybe b5 is actually one of the hardest. No, let's okay. do some... Let's do... Let's do uh, I'm going to walk you through. Let's do the easiest, which is h6. Eight... Hmm? Eight... h6, okay. Yeah, h6. h6. So white plays the bishop, h6. Um... Because it kind of tells you, helps you in a way uh, where you, you need to be able to determine when to stop in your calculations. Otherwise, you know, you would just keep on calculating nonstop. It's, sim uh, it's simple for certain types of puzzles because when you win a piece, that's it. You stop in your calculations. In this case, you're not really winning a piece. Uh -huh. It's more the positional um, you know, aspects, which one of them I mentioned was space. Uh, let me answer the chat. Kane says that just watch your half hour video about Shogi. Been trying to learn chess alternatives lately. Um, Kane, you might be interested to join our Discord as well if you have any questions about Shogi. And also today in like four and a half, wait, is it four? No, like in t now it's almost 10, so it will be at 16 o'clock, like in six hours, I guess. We will have a Shogi stream. If you have your Shogi games uh, you would like me to review, you can bring it. But for now, we're doing chess, yeah. Okay, so that h6 is helping us somehow? Yes, yeah, helping us. Okay, so how is that benefiting us? Or how is that a uh, disadvantage for black? Well, the queen line is open. It's blocking our knight. Um... That's all I can see. <laughs> you wouldn't think it's a disadvantage because uh, you were considering like bishop a2, bishop b1, or knight g5, right? Going after h7. Yeah. Most people look at that first. Yeah. But there's another, you know, way to attack black's king besides knight g5. Knight g5 besides, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I can see this bishop like lurking on that pawn, but 
That's not it. Wait, other way to attack the king? Yeah, what's another way to attack the king besides knight g5? It's not really that common, but... I mean, we are not talking about the bishop b1, right? Oh, uh, no, not bishop b1. Yeah, because like uh, black has uh, enough defenders. The knight on f6. And if he needs to, the knight on d7 can support h7 by playing knight takes f6 or knight f8. Okay, black. Okay, maybe. Okay, so white can play this move because of h6. Because black, if black did not play h6, white does not have this move. Otherwise, it's very lame. Now you got it? No. Okay. So, okay, maybe um, another way to say this. Black weakened himself by playing h6. How can white uh, gain an advantage? Yeah, I understand that. It's just that I don't see how we can do that. And it has something to do with the bishop on a2. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes the bishop a2 powerful. Wait, are we thinking about something stupid like g6 queen or something? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, um, it, it wouldn't work here. But like, let's say the pawn's on e3. No, not on e3. Then you have the bishop takes h6 idea. So yeah, that might be, you know, a consideration. But you're on the right track, though. Yeah, queen g6 doesn't work because it's just too slow. But we have something similar. You notice that you can uh, take advantage of that pin. So, so I just play knight h4? Yeah, you got it, knight h4. Oh, God, yeah. that my brain hurts. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a hard move to see. Welcome, yeah. Kane. Welcome to the Discord server. Yes. Yeah, so... um. I mean, it's not like knight h4 might be the winning move here, but black has to be extremely careful, has to consider, you know, white's knight h4, knight g6 idea on top of the other things that white can do. Okay, so let me give you one variation. After h6, okay, and then black, uh, white plays knight h4. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. Okay, which one should we do? Okay, let's do this variation. Let's see if you can do this in your head. Okay, this is not that hard because it's four moves. Okay, after knight h4, black plays queen d8. Okay, find two more moves for white. Uh, Kane is asking, are you, do you stream to ball? He's very uh, interested. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm not. Maybe uh, should. I only stream with uh, you, Carol. Oh, okay, two moves. Yeah, maybe in the future, but I'm just like really busy. Mm -hmm. So we can play knight g6, then the rook has to go. Yeah, okay, and then the fourth move, this is where it's like really amazing. Very nice. Um, and then magic happens. Uh, we... I have no idea, wait. I have no idea. The only move I'm seeing is f e5, but knight takes, then the queen is So it's open. like we took something out of nothing to create this position. Yeah. yeah. Because it doesn't seem like white is winning when you first look at the then initial position. Then you put position. the queen on b3. Okay, good. Queen b3. Okay, can you go a little bit more? Okay, after rook e6. E6. Um... Okay. Very good. Queen B3 was very hard to find. Very good. E6. Oh, God. Uh... So 
after rook e6, well, why did you play knight g6? Of course, you you were attacking the rook, but you also had something in mind, unconsciously. I believe I did not have anything else in mind, but my brain is empty. But well, it's okay, no, this is uh common. I mean, if it was like a tactic position like shogi, you would instantly get it. That's why uh, this is a great position because it will help you with your chess strategical thinking. So the knight's on g6. You're attacking something with uh, two pieces. Well, some people say that the pawn is not a piece, but... I mean, I know I can take the pawn, but then the knight take... Wait, the knight cannot take. The knight cannot take because of f ah! All right, so <laughs> take the e5 pawn, I guess. It might be a little bit hard to see, so just play it out. Let's uh, just play that variation out because it's really nice. So um, just play, yeah, bishop a2, h6, knight okay. h4, and then it will be clear. Wait, what was it? Okay. I'm just threatening knight g6, so black would play, let's say queen d8. Okay, yeah, this is all forced. Yeah, forced. Okay, knight d5 cannot be played up because knight takes d5. Yeah, okay. And then let's say after that, knight g4, black has to move the knight. Yeah, so let's say knight g4. Okay, and then here you should be able to find the move. Okay, so this is another, uh, I'll give you another puzzle. Okay, um, white has a very strong move. Okay, so it's it's like a two, three mover. Yeah, so what are the first uh, two moves white should play here in this position? And the engine says it's a plus six advantage. And after that, we don't really have to um, calculate further because it's uh, really easy to win. Uh, I mean, I'm considering attacking the rook with the knight. Yeah, obviously. The first thing you want to do is to look for checks, captures, and threats. And they will yeah. escape, and then we just push the pawn again? Good. You got it. Okay. That's it. You got it. <laughs> that was a simple one. But you see how this bishop a2 is powerful, and then it's preventing black from playing h6. Yes. Well, it's not that yeah. very direct prevention, but I guess um, it makes sense in the long run, yeah. Well, it's kind of forced line, but yeah, it takes some figuring out. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, something else then. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the first uh, position. There was another uh, variation after knight h4, black can play um, queen, rookie 8. Yeah, let's look at uh, that variation. Okay. okay, meantime, I will talk with chat. I started just with a lot of chill people, most recently a guy who's going for a title in Canada. Speaking of Canada, I believe Nimu, who just appeared and wanting a match. Nimu, we're doing some chess study right now. So unless you want to play chess and after the study, then no. Um, yeah, I believe, you Kane, you, you can ask the questions, sure. Um, and Yellow says that I think Black can play 95 with an unclear position after knight takes d5, bishop takes d2. I don't know what that means, but... Oh, because our bishop is hanging. Paul, do you yeah. see that comment? Do for another 30 more minutes, and then I want to see you play against Nimu chess. <laughs> okay. But do you see the variation that Yellow is talking about? He uh, mentions that... Which position he's referring? Um, which position is it? Is it after knight g6? Well, it's not here, Knight d5 instead of knight g6, he says. 
For some reason, it's not a permitted term to say knight g4. I don't know why. Hi, yo, secretary. I saw your yeah, hello earlier. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think after knight d5. Oh, so I oh. guess instead of this knight, this knight. So instead of knight f6, knight g4. No, not there. Uh, knight d5. Knight e what e f d5. D5. Oh, here. Yeah. Knight takes. Bishop takes the bishop. Yeah, and then knight f4. F4. Wait, f. Where is the f4 here? F4. Knight c5. He thinks it works for black, but he's not sure. But oh, don't we get a queen as well? I don't know. No, we don't. I, w I would say after queen c2, um, yeah, white is a lot better. Hmm. What if I mean, white should be because there's just so many pieces, active pieces that white has, and black doesn't can't utilize the rook on a8, bishop on c8. What if we just move the knight here or something? Knight where? Like you, 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 you could do that too. Yeah, you could do that. I think either or would work. I just felt that the other one is more convincing. I see. So you're giving me a puzzle that has a critical flow in it. Mm. <laughs> Does Shogi okay. have an engine? Yes. Is there a Shogi version of 960? I don't know what's 960. What are titles on Shogi? There are eight titles for male professionals and around six for female professionals. Uh, we don't have Shaggy Grandmaster, we have Shaggy Professionals and Lady Professionals. Yep. Paul? Yes, so uh, let's go back to that position. Which one? Um, instead of Queen D8, so that's move two, mm -hmm. what if uh, Black plays Rook E8? Rook yeah. e8. Okay, so this one. Let's consider it in our heads, I guess, right? So queen, uh, pawn, sorry, pawn, this and this. Okay. Yeah, now that I see all these variations, I'm pretty sure as a homework, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Pieces are randomized. I don't think there is a well, variant of shogi like that, yeah, um, but we have funny variations as well, including the one when there's a secret king, um, or like pieces that move as pieces that are behind, directly behind them, stuff like this. We do have fun variants. Yeah, secret king. You can actually capture a king and drop it back on the board if it, if the king is not the king. It's treated like a normal piece. Yeah, I see you guys are excited about it. <laughs> okay, the rook move. There is also a version of Shogi where you have all the Shogi pieces and the other side has only a lion, which is a special piece from the middle Shogi. Lion moves... Um, how do I describe lion movement? If there is a piece next to lion, it can eat it and come back. Or it can jump two squares in any direction or one square in any direction. It can like do jumps, kind of. Paul, do you play nine sixty? Um, fun time. Oh, I like it because um, you don't really need to know much openings nice. or any openings, and you just rely on your chess skills. And the reason why chess is very difficult is because everybody memorizes openings 10, 15, 20, 30 moves deep. Mm hmm. 
I'm considering knight f5. I know you were telling me, you know, about the Yoko Fudori. Uh huh. You know, like I mean, not to memorize, but it's can it can be a help because, like, as a chess player, I'm used to memorizing twenty oh, moves. No, no, no. Yoko Fudori needs memorizing. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's important to understand first, then to memorize. I mean, you know. to memorize means to understand in a way, but. Yeah. But there are a lot of chess players where they just memorize, but they don't understand what they're doing. Oh, then I love to abuse them by playing totally random move they didn't prepare for. Yeah, yeah. That's how grandmasters, you know, they do well against weaker players because they'll play a dubious move. And there's like some sub subtleties that the lower player, rated player does not understand. And that's how they take advantage. Mm, 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 mm. But that's how Shogi works as well. Okay, so I'm thinking knight f5, then the queen has to run either to d8 or f8. Um, then uh, if the queen runs to d8, I could consider knight to d6. But I'm not sure if I'm on the right track in general. So <laughs> I shall doubt myself and search for another move. Um, Which one are you looking at after? Oh wait, we can clearly go g6 again. g6 again. And the queen has oh. to run. Wait, if the queen runs to d8, it's like exactly the same variation. So the queen have to go to d6 instead. It's not really necessarily the same variation because the rook is not on d6. Well, as a result, it will be the same because the king... So before we played queen d8 instead of rook e8, but after queen d8, we played knight g6, and then the rook went to e8, which would be exactly the same position we had before, it's just different move order. Mm. So the only way to variant that is after yes. knight g6, we play queen to some other square. And the only safe square would be d6. Oh, that's my logic, but... Do you follow, Paul? Yeah, yeah I guess you could do that, but... Um, hmm. there, I think there might be uh, something stronger. Something strong. So you're saying it's neither knight g6 and neither knight f5? No, no, knight, it's, it is knight f5, but oh, there's okay. like a, something else. Knight g6, they're, they're all playable, but um, it's a very interesting idea that white has. Okay, so knight f5 and the queen has to go either to f8 or d8. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's consider d8. Yeah, after d8 and f8, white has a very nice uh, knight move. What do you think that is? Well, d8, d6. After f8 or d8. I mean, we could take h6, but I'm not sure if... So you say it doesn't matter which way he goes? Um... Which variation are you looking at? Queen f8? I'm looking at knight f5, and then I'm asking myself whenever f8 or d8 is better. Yeah. And after yeah. d8, I was considering d6 knight. d6 knight, okay. Uh, yes, yeah, you're on the right track. Knight d6 is the move. So then they would remove the rook away, up or sideways. Um... 
Okay, let's say uh, rook f8. Yeah, what happens after rook f8? Then the. I don't know if taking the bishop benefits us. It doesn't seem like it benefits us. <sighs> well, we could move the queen to b3 because now we have three pieces attacking the f7 square, but... So I would say queen b3 again. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking queen b3. Mm. Okay. I was actually looking at another queen move. Okay. So you're thinking about g6. Yeah, g6. I think g6 is stronger. I don't know about queen b3. g6. G6, they have to move their queen again to protect it to e7. But then I assume we can take e5 or something. Okay, so after uh, rook f8, queen g6, what were you suggesting that black should play? Uh, queen e7. Queen seven. Queen seven. Sure. Karo can joke. Oh God, no. <laughs> um, no. Queen e seven does not work because white has a very nice mating combination. This is very nice. So after you find it, you can uh, play the move so that. Chat can see what variation we're looking at. Okay, and then we can uh, reply back to yellow traffic light after. Ah, uh, there's a checkmate. Oh, you found it? What? So the queen's on g6, bishop's on a2, knight's on d6. Oh, we just got knight f5 or something. Yeah, knight f5, and you're threatening... Well, to take the pawn on g7. Yeah, g7. There's no uh, defense. Okay, let's show it. Oh, oh, knight just loses the queen. Knight takes e7. Yeah, so you can show it. I think it's very nice. This is very hard. Sorry, I, I'm i pushing you to the limits. My goal for this is actually not to look for these tactics, but to get you a good feel of how to play positional chess. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Okay, now let's uh, try to answer yellow traffic light. Um, instead of queen e7, black can play knight d5. Queen e7, knight flag, queen to d5. Yeah, what? so yeah. yeah, right here. So knight d5. You can just play knight it. Knight d5, yeah. okay. Knight d5. Oh, because the queen is now. Okay. What do you think uh, what should do here? Wait, I thought you were talking about the position before knight f5. Oh. oh, okay, but why isn't it winning? That's something I need to figure out, I guess. Yeah, this, this is also a nice uh, variation. Maybe yellow traffic light didn't mean this, but this is another one of Black's defenses. Um, if we take, you lose the queen. Take what? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the first thing I was looking at, but I don't think it's enough. Then the king gets in the corner. Okay. 
Um, so instead. Yeah, I think you can get it. This is hard. Even uh, I might not be able to get it. Wait, but you know what the answer is. So... Well, I know what the answer is, yes. So how come you might not get I, it? I couldn't get it right away. And I had to look it up. But that was because I couldn't see the position from the very beginning. From here, I don't think it's uh, that hard. I think you should be able to get it, Carol. Depression hits. Okay. Uh... <sighs> So it's not night takes night, you say. I mean, we could pin the rook to the king and then take the bishop, but I'm not sure if it's good enough. Or we could sacrifice bishop first, but I don't think it's good enough. Okay. What are you looking at? Which uh, capture or uh, uh, night take spawn? Night take spawn. Okay, night take spawn. That is the move. Okay, let's look at it deeper. Night takes f seven. Rook takes f seven. I take this knight. I guess we could just push the pawn instead. Yeah, knight takes d5, c takes d5. And then we bishop then takes, right? But you mean bishop takes d5, right? Not yeah. the pawn push. Yeah, yeah, you can just do that, okay? And then what happens after bishop takes d2? Bishop takes d... well, what? Bishop takes d2. Black can play the uh, that move because the knight's not on c3. Well, I mean, black can guard the rook, but then we'll lose the bishop, so... Oh yeah, bishop that was my d calculation, but okay. But I thought rook is more important. So after bishop takes d2, then... Um, we gonna take the rook, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, take the rook. The reason why I think uh, you're struggling is because you want to see, you know, like... Uh, like that, it's clearly like winning. But in this case, um, black is uh, up a piece, but you got to get the feel. Black does not have the rook on a8 developed. Bishop on c8 is not developed. The queen is still on its original square. And after bishop um, takes uh, d2, queen takes f7, king h8, white can play rook d1, and then you can just stop there with your calculations. White is better. I mean, you can go deeper. But then, I mean, it depends on how well you can calculate. But, like, uh, for a lot of people, you know, they would just go by intuition. I mean, if they see this far, then you can stop. Because you have so much space. Um... Yeah, and then you also have some pawns for it. Like, you have how many pawns? You have two extra pawns. So it's like two pawns for a piece. That's already uh, enough compensation. Two pawns for a piece is enough? That. Yeah, well, it's not really enough, but you got space advantage. I and see. you got open files. Black doesn't really have, like, you know, any active pieces except for the bishop on d2, which is going to be eaten pretty soon. Okay, maybe not eaten, but bishop can go to a5, but it's just really hard to play this position for black. Yeah, let's uh, try and move the pieces. Yeah, right here. What do you think? It's just, it's just really hard. Yeah, I mean, there's just too many like loose pieces on the board. 
But our queen this, is under attack. Yeah, we gotta find something where yeah, so maybe queen h5. Yeah, queen h5 is probably the best here. Maybe. So one could argue they want to exchange the queens because they have peace advantage. No. Are you able to do that? I'm thinking after queen e8. Oh, by the way, don't queen... they have a fork on our... No, it, it doesn't work. Queen e8 mates. No, well, uh, you can do that. Queen takes knight, bishop takes... Then it will be even, but then white is up uh, two pawns. So this should be uh, winning for white. White still has uh, active pieces. Queen is controlling the entire board. Yeah, I have trouble like judging this position in general. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess no, we're no, losing no. a piece, but we don't. They don't have a rook. Yeah, but as you yeah. say, it's intuitive. But we're not exactly winning, so it's. Yeah, yeah. That's why it makes this uh, really difficult to assess. Yeah, it, even it's difficult for me too. So you're not the only one that's struggling. So the question is, why are you giving me such difficult puzzles? Oh, <laughs> it's not difficult. I'm trying to help uh, help you get better. Yeah, because uh, the other puzzles that I gave you were, I think, uh, pretty simple. Hmm. You got you got those puzzles. Oh, here. Okay, this is a nice combination. What's where's the mate? It's uh, mate in one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, I started four. thinking of it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a mate though? I mean, I, I see the queen, the king goes, and then the bishop, maybe. Uh, wait, which way? There's so many moves that look good now, the, the other bishop. Oh. Is it a mate? <laughs> you don't see it? Okay. No, no, no. Um, I... Yeah, I think it's a mate. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. But yeah, it's hard to find. Um, hmm? Carol mentioned in one of her videos that there are such shaggy moves that can lead to end of a friendship. Uh, you can trap the bishop with b4 Wait. instead of rook d1. Instead of rook d1, b4. Oh, with the pawn push, I see. Okay, thank you so much, Kunelk. Uh, I completely butchered what she actually said, which is a lot more elegant than my paraphrase, but I forgot her exact words, unfortunately. Okay, um, moves that make you lose friends, let me think. So those, those particular moves are not the disrespectful ones, they are more like... Those are the moves that you would play to win the game of Shogi that give no chance to your opponent. That's what I probably meant in the video. So they are like exact solid moves that give no chance. But what Kane is asking is about disrespectful ones. Well, I can imagine one of the ways that is disrespectful that you won't resign. And because, you know, Shogi is a very cultural game. If you don't resign properly and just... I don't know, leave your king in the check and then just walked away. That would be super disrespectful. Mm. Um, but then nobody would ever play with you again. So, oh, wait, I'm stupid. It's this. For some reason, I thought the queen is not protecting the diagonal. Yeah, you got it. I'm so stupid. I, I, for some reason, I thought after the bishop, they can run up. My okay, I think we've already spent so much time on this puzzle. So, um, yeah, we can just uh, stop for now. Okay. And then you, you can play against uh, Nimu. But your homework would be, um, oh, I'll give you bad news. Okay. Oh, no. You know what variation we looked at um, in uh, this, for this puzzle? The variation? We, this only, one? we only looked at just one variation, which was yeah. 86, right? Yeah. We didn't look at all the other variations. Okay. So just... your homework <laughs> would be to uh, look at the other variations and figure out why white is winning in each of them. But can you just give me the hint of what variations for black that would be? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can give you. Okay, so let's see. So besides h6, um, look at e takes d4, which we already talked about it. So that one should be easy. E takes um, Look d4. at bishop e7. Yeah, e takes d4. Take the pawn. Yeah, okay, so that's the first. 
Okay, maybe um, I will the, actually play this. Okay, yeah. And then the next one is bishop c7. Okay, and then the next one is rook e8. Yeah, and then I think uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, didn't you talk about pawn b5 as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, look at pawn b5. Pawn b5 is actually pretty lame, but you can look at pawn b5. Yeah. Pretty lame. You thought you said it's quite a difficult one before. I had <laughs> hopes, pawn b5. I had hopes. Okay. Have you I think that's... I, I think that should be more than enough. Okay. So maybe what you should do is do it without moving the pieces, and then after that, then you can move the pieces. Okay, and, I will do uh, that. Because it's kind of hard, probably, for you to um, find it even when moving the pieces, but, you know, just like how you would approach other studies, um, you want to do it without moving. Sure, uh, get it, got it. All right, uh, Paul, you're being asked about... Dubov versus Karjakin, Karjakin. Yeah, yeah, I think I seen that game. That was the it was like a Evans Gambit, e four e five, knight of three, knight c six, bishop c four, bishop c five, and then white plays b four. That's the Evans Gambit, and I believe Dubov was black or white, white in that game, and destroyed Karjakin. And this was um, two or three years ago. So, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with that one game. One year ago. Oh, it was one year. Oh, sorry. 2020. Okay, that's right. One year ago. So, Nimio, are you still there? I don't know if I have him in France. I don't know what his, his level as well. But he's a very strong shogi player, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. So I'm quite looking forward. Yeah. But I don't know if he's still here. He seems to be offline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there is some cool puzzle in it, I don't really want to watch it. I'm going to wait for Paul to introduce me to. I gave you a difficult one because <laughs> you gave me a really difficult one for Shogi, so. Yeah, Paul, Paul, I, Paul. I think after a while, you know, uh, you appreciate this kind of puzzle more. I don't know if you have when this you... expression in po in English, but we say in Polish in this kind of situations that you're gathering for yourself. And gathering for yourself, it sounds like you're getting um, like revenge. harvest. Revenge. And, <laughs> yeah, and the meaning is the revenge is cooking, basically, yeah. I'm not sure oh, if my... revenge is cooking is also English, but yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with some interesting puzzles for you because uh, you can easily find puzzles in on the internet, but finding some interesting ones is a different story. I agree. Same in Shoggy, actually. Yeah. Let's see if Nimu is there. Nimu is not there. I sent him a message, but yeah. There, maybe you can find someone else. Last resort, you can play me, but yeah, let's see. I mean, else. I can click this one button and play a random person, but. Well, yeah, maybe that would work. Oh, God. Okay, who are you playing against? Some random person that has 1800. We should be able to beat the 1800. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Do you know the name of this opening? Nope. Okay, it's the English, which is characterized by the C4 push. English, okay. So quick. Mm -hmm. Mm. 
Yeah, after you play maybe two games or so, we should definitely go over the games just real quick. Because um, I was talking about space earlier, and I'm black. I don't deserve space. <laughs> you did something I didn't like. Oh, okay. But you're doing great. You're doing great. Yeah, I know. It's I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not dying immediately. So yeah. yeah. I mean, what I do is basically follow up the principle of developing the pieces, but yeah, he got a lot of space, that's true. I think in our next session, we can do um, hand and brain, which has been, which is really fun. A lot of strong players do that. So basically, both me and you will be playing against, you know, some random players. Mm hmm. And let's say you're the brain and I'm the hand. Oh, you that's tell what me. It is. Yes. Oh, you, oh, oh, you know what uh, I was referring to. Yeah, we should do that. I think that would be fun for the stream. And of course, we can switch. You be the brain and then I be the brain next game. Gonna play something weird. No, I also think it's insightful too, watching um Carol Sensa play chess. Because uh, when I play chess, I usually play very out well, it's actually ultra solid. I don't like to create any weaknesses, holes in my play. But and I do, I yeah. <laughs> just, but you have that very strong attacking sense, which I don't have. So watching you play chess is somewhat helping my chess, mm. so I can be more aggressive. I'm not saying that you're playing bad. I mean, of course, it's a balance. You know, like in Shogi, you no, have no, to I know when to, yes. think, when to be solid. Yeah, that's why, why you know middle game is the most hardest, uh, difficult thing. Openings is easy because all you have to do is memorize and understand. End games is easy because you do a bunch of Tsume Shogi puzzles or chess puzzles and it's all about patterns. But middle game is hard because it's really hard to determine whether you should attack or whether you should defend. I do play the hippo defense, but definitely not a, like a real gangster. We should buy a better microphone, Paul. Oh, really? Yeah, we did so many streams together. I think I'm gonna go uh, do some shopping on Black Wait, Friday. Wait, your microphone just changed to a better one. What the heck? <laughs> oh, like, oh, maybe that's because I'm kind of being closer to my screen. <laughs> yeah, really? maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay, so I'll speak a little bit closer. Gotcha. Sorry. I'm using, I don't, I'm not really using like a separate microphone. It's mm -hmm. uh, with the, uh, what is it? Microsoft Surface 6 Pro tablet, which I really like because it's very light, portable. And I use this to um, go uh, travel to tournaments because mm -hmm. I'm not like bringing my entire computer. I should play faster because I'm losing on time. Mm. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, next time I'll, I'll speak a little bit closer. All right. No, I also figured out recently that my microphone sounds better closer, so it's kind of fun we both figured it out. Mm. Okay, so I wanted to do something crazy. That requires me to do some weird rook movements. I'm not sure if I'm happy from that. Oh no, but the queen will... Ah! Damn you! Okay. Yeah, I, I think up to 1800 is easy, but after that it gets hard because you really need to know positional chess. No. You can't just rely on tactics alone. Yeah, in this so, case, definitely. 
So White's idea is very simple. Just gang up on the D6 backward pawn. Remember we talked about backward pawns? Yeah. And this is a very good example of how White is, you know, utilizing that uh, concept mm -hmm. to make it hard for you to attack. Yeah, it's, now quite, you're in. it's quite rare that I see people do it on my rating. It's quite a nice mm, game. Yeah. What openings do you both usually play? I used to play only Queen, Queen's Gambit, but recently I try E5 as... Wait, E5 is as black. Like the King Pawn, I don't know. I think you're going to like E4. Lots of um, different types of positions you can get with E4. Okay, time to get crazy. It's time to get crazy yet. It's amazing that your opponent hasn't really consumed much of his or her time. Yeah, Just that's one cheating. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but... <laughs> oh, God. Make a risky move. Oh no, we were talking about that earlier. By doing that, you just created a big weakness on that uh, b5 square. I don't care. Yeah. If he moves a piece, I will have my breathing space and I will murder him. Septic mm. <laughs> ball. Ah. See, now that he, <laughs> he just created that big outpost for the night. Yep. Yeah, but I think you're fine because uh, you have the freeing move. I think it would work. I have no time to think. Yeah. I think you have a freeing move. You have to play that move, otherwise you're going to get suffocated. Yeah, you have a freeing move, Carol. I... Oh, darn. I wanted you to play d5, but your opponent took the pawn. You're still fine. No, I'm not fine. He's going to take this pawn. And... I was trying to boost your confidence. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Okay. It's, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Fake boosting my confidence. I think you're playing well under time pressure. I have 10 seconds. And your opponent's thinking because, yeah, this is not an easy position for your opponent either. Wow, yeah. Shoot. Oh, I would have kept the queens on the board. No. So you're just down three pawns. It's fine, I won worse. Hmm. It's all about peace activity. So yeah. if you're more active, then you would have some advantage. Just hope that um, your opponent won't reroute the knight to a much better square. Knight on the rim is dim. That's uh, one of those chess um, mm -hmm. proverbs. 
But from my practice, if you have a strong strategy card player, usually they will mess up in the end game. So let's hope on that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like he will, but. Okay, that's actually an interesting concept. I like that move. Very nice. Yeah, that's a very nice move. But quite, I think, has a resource. Oh, that's definitely no good. Okay, well, white is still okay. I mean, white is up by many pawns. Whoa. Oh, wow. I'm okay, I'm dead. I'm surprised you're putting up a good fight because remember your opponent had like four minutes? Yeah. And now has one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, I don't know why he did that. Giving you a chance? Now it's not so easy. Mm. Well, go with your instincts. Oh God, Do my instincts don't work here. <laughs> it's losing already. Yeah. yeah, his rook won't be moved. Oh God, he moved the rook. Okay, okay, <laughs> instincts doesn't work. Um, no, just move your rook. Move your rook. Yeah. Oh, it's dead. Oh my god, sorry, I, I didn't Oh shoot, know wait, so, okay. I clicked the button. He was going for like a checkmate for it. Oh my god. <laughs> no, it was hard because he um, oh. was putting you in Zutbong. You know what that means, right? You didn't really have any uh, useful moves to make. I any don't... move that you make loses. I don't think it's the 1800. He's much stronger than the 1800. I played him please before. Well, it was the opening. I don't know if you want to play like another game or if you want me no, to I just want go to over know this. that one move that upset you. Okay, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, it did really upset me. Okay. So, E takes B4 is okay. Yeah, I would there's other moves that you can make, but definitely not. Wait, wait, which one? Yeah, so you took the pawn, right? Right here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, usually white would not play d4. We'll play something slow like Finkero the bishop, g3, bishop, g2, castle. But in this case, you definitely do not want to do what you did. Take the knight. Yeah, you're, just, you're just giving away the center. Yeah, that's a big mistake. Well, I thought there is this idea of if you drag the queen out, it's easier to target it in the future. But I guess because no, we exchanged the knight. True, true. That is correct. But you don't have enough pieces to harass the queen. Well, that's what I learned today. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So if, like, let's say the queen is out and you still have the knight, like, on b8, and let's say the knight on d4 is somewhere else, queen on queen to d4 is bad because you can play knight c6. Black has an extra minor piece to harass the queen. Yeah. But with the knight off the board... Black doesn't have enough so firepower. So what do I play here? I move the bishop? Oh, just play a developing move, like bishop b4 is good. Or c5. b4 or c5. Wait, 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 wait. c5, d4. Wait, d4? Bishop b4, b4. b4. Yeah, okay. pin the knight. Pin the knight. Yeah, yeah there. Okay, that makes sense. But when they take, I take it with... Uh, uh Definitely with... Uh, which pawn? b1. Yeah, with that one, of course. You don't want to take it with the D pawn, otherwise you're going to move your queen. You don't want to do that. Time is really important. All right, Nimio finally answered with a very laid back answer. So I'm disappointed. Um, oh. Yeah, OK. Chat, is it interesting if I play someone else or? Oh, here you are, OK. When they okay, wanted to yeah. play. We'll play a game with you against Nemo. Yeah, 
wait to play with a friend. It's great. Two shogi players, strong shogi players playing against each other. Actually, I don't know how strong Nimu is um, in shogi. In shogi, in shogi, in shogi. Nimu, your nickname is Nimu, right? Shogi is currently one down, but he went much higher before, so at least oh, two or three yeah, down. I was, Nimu was like four or five down. Okay, one down. So you're still a lot better in Shogi. Nimu doesn't have an account. Account. Mm. I give you the link. Oh, okay. I did not really realize that that's possible. Yeah, it is. I gave you the link, Nimu, in the disc. Oh. Is it you? Well, it looks like uh, he accepted it. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's him because it says anonymous. Oh, I see. It could be someone else. Yeah, have. I don't think anybody can type this fast. All right. He's talking here. Space. Oh, yes, yes. This is exciting. Now I get to see you play E4. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter because he played that move. Can I play moves like no? Can I play moves like this? You can. Uh, it looks like quite interesting right now. Like either he pushes a pawn and destroys his shape to dislocate it, or I don't know if it's beneficial or not. I usually will play something different, but I, I can show you next time if you want me to go over some openings. Kane says he can play next. Okay. When he says he's not good enough, well, what a lie. <laughs> yeah, what you're playing is a little bit tame, so not very aggressive. Yeah. But I mean, still okay, very solid though. But um, what you want to do as white is you want to try to press your opponents, like be very aggressive. I like how the knight has this eyebrow and it looks like aggressive. Like, you know. Okay, uh, I'm gonna cuss. Well, in Shogi, we usually say you wanna get aggressive after you establish that your king is safe, but. Um, Kane, I am um, during the game. You can send me links, like, you can tell me your nickname, I guess, or like challenge me. This is my account here. In chess, what I usually do is I try to control the center, get mm -hmm. some space before I castle. Ah, I see. But when you teach chess like to beginners, I tell them to castle early. That's because they don't really understand like much about space and um, center as much. Hey, that's me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> because most of the times you see them get checkmated in on the middle of the board. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. But you don't get checkmate in the middle of the board. So that's because I do... castle. Woo. Oh, that's because you castle. <laughs> yeah, so far so good. I mean, I don't know how much experience with chess Nimio has. Oh, he has a quite... Wait, didn't he always... He Didn't he say that he always plays dragon or something? Hmm. Well, we know from this position that you have space advantage. Mm -hmm. And it helps because you're white. You made the first move. Tell Paul to teach you Bonk Cloud. Um, this is the one where you yeah. move the king. Yeah, it's not really a good opening. Yeah, it's not... A lot of strong players do that just for uh, comical reasons. Mm, just to have a draw. <laughs> yeah, I even saw... Magnus. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks. I saw him doing with Nakamura. 
Yes, yes, yeah. I think that was a three, four move. Uh, yeah. Yeah, draw. yeah. It's so stupid. <laughs> I know. Do shogi players do something ridiculous like that? No, <laughs> I don't. they're, you know, Japan being serious. They respect the game, yeah. yeah. I mean, they get paid for it, and sponsors would get angry. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, it's foreigners. Yeah. Like, if a Japanese person does it, then it's fine. Then you can do it afterwards. You get reprimanded if you do otherwise. Are you sponsored? Uh, no, so the, what, what, by sponsor, I mean each tournament have a sponsor and each game has a tournament, right? So if you do that in a certain tournament, the sponsor of that uh, particular tournament might get angry. Rene itself oh. might get angry. And uh, yeah, being sponsored by a private company, like as a individual sponsor, that's rare. And I was sponsored, yes, I was sponsored by oh, yeah. uh, Calorie Mate. Because in chess, uh, I don't think it's rare if you're in the top 10 in the world. Like Nakamura was sponsored before by Red Bull. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still sponsored. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of the top 10 chess players are sponsored. Didn't Watanabe once play Bogyoku against a computer? Um, those were different times, Yellow. The computers weren't strong, perhaps. I don't remember the game, though. If it's like in the end game, we don't say Bogyoku, we say he's going for entering king. If it's in opening, that would be a little bit trolly, yeah. Yeah, if it's end game move, then it's it's fine. It's not Bogyoku. Bogyoku is like bone cloud, you draw in few moves. Oh, if you move it up the first, then it's not Bogyoku, it's just a way. To like open up, it's not necessarily a bad move. Yeah, back then they were exposing the computers by making a solid structures, like playing something out of Joseki. So it might have been one of those moves. I hope Nimio doesn't run out of time. He has 30 seconds left. Okay. Yeah, I realized that like by looking at uh, some of the Shogi games and also some videos, that um, Japanese uh, shogi players are incorporating, you know, those strong engines like in their uh, opening analysis, which was not that common, I think, 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think it wasn't. It's a little bit behind uh, in chess because chess, I think in the early 2000s, that's when people were utilizing computers. And shogi, I think it was like more like five years ago, I think. Is yeah. that true? Um... Okay. I don't know how many years ago, but there was a time that computers weren't strong. Wait, mm. I have a bishop and a knight. That's weird. I don't know what to do with it. He has a strong knight, and I have a very weak bishop. Okay, th this is uh, another positional concept you need to know. And I would have to scare his knight away from the center of yeah, good. Yeah, you, you save the bishop. Very good. Yeah, I mean, it's open game or whatever, right? Yeah, what, what makes chess hard is knowing which minor pieces to keep, the bishop or the knight. Mm. Yeah, I was considering going for like yeah, you, rook. You don't really need to worry about that as much. You can just give up that pawn for initiative. Yeah, that's what I was considering, but I was like, mm, he has less time. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is this move? I mean, what? Huh? Black, black what resign. Happened? Too little time? Oh. I think you, you played uh, pretty well. 
but yeah, it was a little bit slow on the clock. So I don't know if you know Nimu, but there is like three seconds. So if you play quickly, you get time back. It's not like Shoggy. Um, and I'm really angry that you resigned. Thank you so much. Uh. So this one doesn't have time. For our next session, do you want me to uh, go over some openings? I really bad at the openings. Because I feel like um, you're just playing random moves. Yes, I'm definitely playing random moves. Thank you for noticing, Paul. I think I'll prepare something on openings. Maybe this next session or the following session. Yeah, I mean, I know zero about openings. Maybe I should prepare something myself, but... Um, of course, I'm playing randomus because I just don't have the theory. No, it, it's good. As long as you apply those opening principles. So that would include development, team safety, center. Don't trade your... Um, yeah, so my, log my logic pieces. would be that, yes, um, I prefer to understand the principles so that I can learn the openings better later on. Yeah. That's uh, more important than memorizing the openings. Yeah, exactly. So this is why I never learned it exactly, because uh, Kane says he's not good, but he plays well, so... Uh... Kane is doing pretty well. Yeah. Okay, there's one move that I like, but I'll tell you later. I'm not going to say anything now. Catching. I was pressured quite hard. But I got the tactic. What happens, uh, Carol, um, after knight c5? So let's say, like, black did not take the d5 pawn, but black played c5 instead. Knight c5. c5 here? Yeah, knight c5. Knight goes to c5. What will you play? Um... I hope you were anticipating that move. Otherwise, knight g5 wouldn't be as strong. Oh. Mm. I mean, I could attack it with the pawn, but... I could play pawn b5, b4. Yeah, pawn b4, that's strong, because you win a pawn, right? After b4, then black has to play h6. Otherwise, black would be in deep trouble. And you just take the knight, and then you take the pawn on d6, and then the pawn on g5. Wait, wait. He has to play h6, then I yeah. take the knight. Yeah, you take the knight. Then they take the and knight. Then he takes the knight, and then you take the pawn. Question is which pawn? Uh, d6. D6, because... Oh, sorry. Um, Yeah. And then I can always retake and, that one, right? Yeah, and queen takes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see the knight also nice defensive mode. Yeah, well, probably maybe black might play knight c8 and then protect the pawn on g5. But whatever the case, black has like two double pawns on the g file. And you have like a strong attack on the d file. So you're way better. Mm -mm. Yeah. Because the d file is open. You've taken the pawn on d6. And the d5 pawn, you're going to trade that for c6. So you have the open d file. Uh, I didn't. Know. Yeah. So if you just like play, okay, let's just play some moves. Okay. So after knight c5, okay, b4, to... it's easier uh, when you actually see it. So knight c5, b4. I'm just uh, going over some positional aspect. So black can play queen takes, but then after queen takes, queen takes g5, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, so instead of queen takes d6, let's mm -hmm. say black plays knight c8 instead. Knight c8, okay. Yeah, so which is a very clever move because black is now protecting the protecting. g5 pawn and will take the d6 pawn mm -hmm. next move. So right? here you say something about opening the d line? Yeah, so here you can play maybe d7. Or uh, I think what I would do here is play uh, d takes c6. Bishop takes. And then rook d1. Rook uh, d1, yeah. And then you just move the bishop back. And then you have uh, control on the d file. It's just really hard to play this for black. And if they take it now with the queen, we still take with that pawn, right? It, 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 they take with the queen, you take the g5 pawn. But then they and if they take this it with one. the knight, you just retreat your bishop. Oh, that might be suicide. After bishop takes pawn, um, white wins. I see, because the queen is on the way. So maybe we're scared we take here, but you said that then the bishop goes back. What if he offers queen trade? Mm. Oh. oh, then there's queen e2. Queen e2, meaning we attack their queen. We attack the queen and the knight. And the knight. So then they would have to protect them both at the same time, which is impossible. Unless you give away the bishop. Yeah, okay. Well, you can play knight d6, but knight, knight d6 is... D6. is uh, cannot really be played because of what? This? Because of this move. No, 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 not there. You can, but uh, I think that's going to be just a trade right there. There's a stronger move. Simple move. Simple is best. Should I set the queen? No, I don't know. No, you don't know. It's just simple. Just simple. Very simple. What? Uh, look for the first thing you want to do is look for captures or checks. That's the very first thing you want to do. So, do you see a way to capture something? Yep, uh, that's it. And what are you threatening? You're threatening to win the knight. Well, okay, maybe not really because oh. there's. I see. Okay. But okay. you have a nice. really strong advantage. You, I mean, after rook f6, you have bishop takes f5. Yeah. You, you, there's like all sorts of pins. You're pinning the knight, you're pinning the rook. And then after you move the bishop, you're going to attack the g5 pawn. The king has no shelter. I agree. I agree. This looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why opening up the d file is uh, very strong. I always get forked with the knight in the hippo. That's something I should be paying attention to. I always did to Kane. I don't know what's hippo, but I always, because, you know, chess knights and shaggy knights are different. I, uh, I still do it. Yeah. 960 game. No, we're going to probably end the stream because it has been two hours. Um, maybe next time, Kane. Um, next week, like... Those series, because you're first time here, I'm going to explain it to you guys. Those series, every week we do either Shoggy and then Chess. Shoggy, Chess. So next week will be Shoggy, uh, with Paul being the student this time. And uh, do you have anything? The following week, I might not be uh, available. That would be November 6th. I will probably be somewhere in the mainland playing a chess tournament. Okay, because I just also realized that next week I'm going to Germany. Oh, next week. Yeah. Okay. So do we have two weeks break then? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Maybe, 30... cons maybe considering that we always travel on weekends, maybe we should do it on another weekday. <laughs> but that's yeah, something yeah, to yeah. discuss. Uh, I, I will be able to do it. We can discuss that All later. Right. Oh, and yeah, Kane says, and I also say good luck, Paul, the attorney. So your a uh, lot of your tournaments are held during the weekends, Shogi? No, I am on a break currently. Oh, you're on a break. break. I, I have a break, so I have no matches. I'm free all the time. Okay. Well, yeah. Hope you have a safe trip in Germany. Yeah. Thank have you. Have fun. Yay. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. I have the homework right, which is this position. Yes, and we looked at 8-6, but uh, we need to look at the other variations. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. But it would be nice to review, you know, the H6 because we didn't really look at H6 completely. But I mean, if you have time, yeah, just do a little bit of review for the H6 variation. And of course, if you guys want to join us off stream or like chat with Paul a little bit more, he's also on our Discord. Here is the link. And I will see you in uh, seven hours, I believe, on our Shoggy Sunday stream, where we are hoping to see your key for records so that we can analyze them online. Thank you so much. And thank you, Paul, for being the teacher today. No problem. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, everyone. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. Have a nice Sunday. Bye bye.